Today, Sunday, June 11th, 2023. We're looking at words from Genesis 12, verses 1 through 9. And I'm going to give you the abbreviated version of a message I preached yesterday live. If you want to look at the full 41-minute sermon live, it will be on the blog at PastorTomSims.com on staying the course of faith. We are going to dive into Abram's life, Abraham, Abraham, who is the father of many nations, who God approached one day interrupting his life, challenging him, calling him, taking him on the beginnings of a journey where he lived in the land near the Tigris and the few Euphrates rivers in Iraq and those fertile lands, those good lands, those lands where there was so much cultural history and so much civilization calling Abram to be a father at the age of 75 of many nations, delaying that actual paternal promise for a number of years, but calling him to enter into a covenant relationship that would require him to live by faith for the remainder of his days. And I'm going to apply an acronym to that journey. And that acronym will be based upon the word course. We see this guy running a course here. And what we want to remember is that the life of faith is a long haul life. It is a journey over a course made up of courses that we travel for a lifetime in what Eugene P Peterson I called a long obedience over a lifetime. And I call it faith walking because, uh, well, even though it may be running, uh, sometimes we just have to settle down and walk and sometimes we have to crawl. But it all begins with a conversation. And if you look at the first verse of Genesis 12, you'll see that the Lord said something to Abram. Let's enter into a conversation this morning by praying in the spirit and in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father. Our Father who lives in heaven. Hallowed, holy, awesome, mighty is your name. May your kingdom of righteousness and justice and peace and mercy and goodness come. And may your will be done, your will, O oh God, that we would love you with all our heart and mind and soul and strength and love our neighbor as ourselves. May these come. May this will of yours be done on earth. Even as it is, it was and ever shall be in heaven. Give us today what we need to continue this journey, our daily bread. And where we have veered from the course and trespassed on territory that was not ours to trespass upon, forgive us our trespasses as the way we 
forgive those who trespass upon our territory, upon our prerogatives, upon our peace, upon our rights. Lead us not into temptation, away from temptation. Keep us on track, O oh God, and deliver us from the evil that encroaches upon our hearts and minds and lives. Do this, O oh God, because it is yours that is the kingdom. It is yours that is the power. It is yours that is the glory forever and forever. Amen. You see, the sea, you see, in course is for a conversation that we have with God, an ongoing conversation that we call prayer. How is it that when God said something to Abram, that Abram heard? Because Abram had engaged over a lifetime. And remember, he had already lived a lifetime by the time he came to the age of 75. He had engaged in a lifetime of conversation with God. So that he could hear when God said, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. So the Owen course is out. You've gone out of something. You've left something behind. And so often it is in the course of faith that we will view those directives of God as interruptions in our lives and calls out of our comfort zones, out of our familiarity, out of those places where we are being held up by inertia and moved forward by momentum. Out, out, the course and the courses of our lives as we stay on course with the course of faith are often times when we're being shaken loose and moved forward out of her, out of the land of our fathers. And then the you is for something else entirely. To the land that I will show you, God says to Abram, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless you and I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse those who curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. The you is for useful and for universal. We're not called in faith just to be a repository and a depository of all of God's blessings and an extension of curses to those who would refuse the blessings, which is sort of a curse by default. That's not what we are as we run the course and stay the course of faith in our lives. No, we are called to be universally useful, to be a source and a channel and a funnel of blessing to all the families of the earth, to love God supremely, to love our neighbors as ourselves, to be a blessing wherever we are and to everyone we meet. 
to be a part of God's change in the course of history, where those who are off track are called to come on track, where those who are excluded are called to be included, where those who are graceless receive grace, where those who feel uh, outside of the place of blessing are brought into the blessing where those who are living outside of covenant are brought into covenant. For this reason, God calls people and God calls nations and God calls families that all the peoples of the earth shall be blessed. God's call to us is to be universally useful in that course of courses in that plan that God has for all humanity and for all history. In you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And we continue reading, beginning with verse four. So Abram went as the Lord had told him. And Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took his wife, Sarah, and his brother, Lot, and all the possessions that he had gathered and the persons they had acquired in Haran and set forth to go to the land of Canaan. Pause there. When God said to Abram, go from and to, he said, the land I will show you. I used to buy Thomas Brothers maps every year so I could figure out where I was going from where I was. Every day was full of journeys. It was full of people to see and places to be. And I needed maps. Now I have GPS on my phone. I just plug it in. And there's a sweet little lady that comes over my GPS and says, in 100 feet, turn right. And in 50 feet, turn left. And at some point says to me in the kindest voice, when I make the wrong turn, when I ignore the instructions, in another 300 feet, make a U-turn. And then at that moment of joy says to me, you have arrived at your destination. You know, I haven't heard that one yet in life yet, not yet. I have not arrived at my destination. The revelation of God, that's the R in course, comes moment by moment like the GPS lady who's telling me what's up. I can look ahead and I can see the ultimate destination. I can see the prize. But oftentimes... It's moment by moment that God unveils and reveals what's next. And life is full of surprises, especially the faith life. It's full of wonder. It's full of surprise. It's full of serendipity, one of my favorite modern words in the English language. But it's also activated by submission, Aaron, Abram went, Abram did what God said to do. So the faith of Abram, Abraham, as he is expanded and broadened in his influence, becomes a template for our lives for what it takes to continue the journey. Submission to the will and the purpose of God, which is for his glory and our good, and it takes us along the path. By the way, when I used to go out and run tracks with my friends and by myself, not competitively, very amateurishly, uh, in order to get it all in, I would have to pass the same markers again and again. By the way, the standard track, you got to go around it 
four times to even log a mile, don't you? Sometimes you'd say, well, I've been here before. Seems like I've been here before. <laughs> Just can't remember when. <laughs> but I got this funny feeling that we'll all be together again because all our lives, a circle. And that circle involves an ongoing and continuous and long obedience, doesn't it? Because the course of faith is about our faithfulness in submission to God, belief that God who has drawn the courses and the course of our lives knows what is best and knows where we're going and where we need to be. And one day we'll say, hey, wake up guy, you're there. This is it. It's a wonderful thing to live this adventure. It is not free of trouble. It is not free of exhaustion. It is not free of doubt and fear and pain and suffering, but it is full of joy and purpose, submission. As Bill Gaither wrote and sang since, and I, and I put it on my blog for this sermon, and I have been singing it in my heart this morning since I started for the kingdom, since my life he controls, since I gave my heart to Jesus, the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows, the more that I love him, more love he bestows. Each day is like heaven, his glory bestows, the longer I serve him the sweeter he grows. But we need that kind of encouragement along the way, and that's the E, and it takes us back to the fifth verse where we left off in Genesis 12. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, to the Oak of Moreh, and at that time the Canaanites were in the land and the Lord appeared to Abram and said to your offspring I will give this land so they built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him and there he moved to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east and there he built an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. Just when you're out of breath, just when you're most discouraged, just when you think you can't go another round around of the track of life, God says, look over there. That's the land I'm going to give you. He gives us a glimpse of the promise. He gives us a foretaste of the glory. He gives us a hint of where we're going. And he lifts our souls by lifting our eyes. And he gives our eyes and our hearts the encouragement we need to keep on keeping on. I said this was a abridgment it's almost a different sermon but it is I've taken today's readings and i've put them into a longer version that includes uh, romans 4 and a passage that illustrates all of these ideas from the gospel of matthew growing out of matthew's own experience of having a Horse change in his life when Jesus came along and took up a conversation with him and called him out of the tax collector's booth and into a life of universal usefulness, revealing piece by piece, moment by moment that you need to think about this. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and calling Matthew and then others to submit as he had Abraham and encouraging him and us and all of us along with, with Abraham along the way. And it says about Negev, Negev in the southern, all the way to the bottom of the land of promise, all the way to the southernmost border of God's promise. And Abraham 
Abram journeyed on by stages toward the Negev. Stages. I thought to end with the E and make it one long course, but then I realized that so often it seems like a course of courses. There are stages of our lives. There are like acts in a play. There are movements like in a great symphony. There are uh, eras of our life, E-R-A-S, eras of our life, our youth, our maturity, our old age, and so many others. Starting a family, growing a family, uh, empty nest. You can go on and on. And through the stages of our life, God doesn't say get there overnight. It's a long journey. I know for some it's a short journey. It seems way too abbreviated. In our city, we uh, we remembered one of our great leaders, H. Spees, yesterday. I joined by video, so many joined in person to remember his legacy and to be encouraged to be better people ourselves today. Today, at a fellowship where he often gathered, our young friend taken so early, Rabbi Adam Bernay, will be remembered for his life and humor and courage. And so we don't know how long the journey is, do we? But it's in stages. We don't have to do it all at once. We are on the way to the Negev, <laughs> the land of promise. Come ye who love the Lord and let his joys be heard. Marching on, I'm bound for the promised land. I'm bound for the promised land. Oh, who will come and go with me? I'm bound for the promised land. Will you allow Jesus to interrupt the course of your life today and set you on a new course? Will you allow God? to interrupt your thinking and your planning and your assumptions and presuppositions and prejudices and your comfort zone and call you into the adventure of faith as he did Abram. And as Jesus called Matthew from the tax collector's booth one day, and as Jesus appeared to Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus with a blinding light saying, why are you persecuting me? Why don't you just join me? Get on course. Stay on course. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace. Shalom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen and amen and amen and amen and amen again. Because it is the amen that is never the period at the end of the sentence of our conversation with God. It's always just a joyous, affirming comma. Amen.